a story that's as thrilling as a high-speed chase and as mysterious as a hidden treasure. Imagine this, Ford, the iconic American car maker, secretly building a supercar with not one, not two, but four turbocharged V12 engines. Sounds like the stuff of dreams, right? Well, buckle up, because we're about to explore the wild journey of the Ford GT90. Let's rewind to January 1995. The Detroit Auto Show is buzzing with excitement, and Ford is about to drop a bombshell. Enter the Ford GT90, a car so audacious it makes your average sports car look like a family sedan. The GT90 wasn't just another concept, it was a glimpse into what could have been the future of supercars. But before we get into the nitty-gritty, let's take a closer look at this beast. First off, the GT90 was Ford's way of paying homage to the legendary GT40. If you remember the GT40, you know it's a racing icon, winning Le Mans four times in a row back in the 60s. The GT90 took some styling cues from its predecessor, like the way the doors seamlessly blend into the roofline. But don't be fooled. This was not just a retro throwback. The GT90 was Ford's bold step into the future, showcasing their new edge design philosophy. This meant sharper angles and more aggressive lines, setting it apart from anything else on the road. Now, let's get to the heart of the matter, the GT90's engine. And when I say engine, I mean engines. Yes, you heard that right. This car was supposed to be powered by four turbocharged V12 engines. That's right, four. Each V12 was expected to churn out a staggering 720 horsepower. Combine that with the car's lightweight aluminum monocoque and carbon fiber body panels, and you've got a recipe for something truly extraordinary. So, what went wrong? Why did this engineering marvel never make it to the streets? It's not that Ford couldn't build it. In fact, they did build it, sort of. The GT90 was indeed a fully functioning prototype, but sometimes even the most spectacular machines can't overcome the hurdles of the real world. The car's high cost, coupled with its niche appeal, made it a tough sell. Moreover, the automotive world was shifting, and Ford had to pivot towards more practical and commercially viable projects. There was also the issue of practicality. A car with four turbo V12 engines is impressive, but it's also a nightmare in terms of maintenance and fuel consumption. The GT90's futuristic features were exciting, but they were also extremely complex and costly to manage. It's a bit like having a supermodel who's also a high-maintenance diva, great to look at but hard to keep around. Despite these setbacks, the GT90's legacy lives on. It's currently on display at the Hodgick Motorsports Museum in Ames, Oklahoma, where car enthusiasts can marvel at this ambitious piece of automotive history. It's a testament to Ford's willingness to push boundaries and dream big even if those dreams don't always come true. January 1995. The Detroit Auto Show is buzzing with excitement, and Ford decides to drop a bombshell. Enter the Ford GT90. This car wasn't just a concept. It was a glimpse into what could have been the future of supercars. But what made this car so special? Let's break it down. Under the hood of the GT90 was an engineering marvel. It boasted a 48-valve V12 engine built on an aluminum block and head. This beast displaced 5.9 liters, or 5,927 cc, and churned out a jaw-dropping 720 horsepower. That's 537 kilowatts for the metric fans, and about 730 PS for those who speak in racing terms. Torque. How does 660 LBFT sound? That's 895 Newton meters, if you prefer your torque in metric. This V12 was equipped with four Garrett T2 turbochargers, pushing the limits of forced induction to new heights. The engine was built on the same 90-degree architecture as the Ford modular engine family, but with a twist, four extra cylinders. Two more cylinders were added to each bank, creating a 90-degree V12 with a 90.2 millimeter bore and a 77.3 millimeter stroke. 
Imagine a V12 engine, perfectly balanced and all in one single casting. It was like Ford was trying to create the ultimate supercar engine. Power from this monstrous engine was sent to the rear wheels through a five-speed manual transmission. This wasn't just any transmission, it was a joint development between FF Developments and Ricardo, crafted specifically for the GT90. This setup was designed to handle the immense power and deliver a driving experience like no other. Now let's talk about heat, because the GT90 had a fiery personality. The exhaust system of this beast got so hot that it could actually damage the car's body panels. To tackle this, Ford used ceramic tiles similar to those on the space shuttle. That's right, the same technology used to protect astronauts during re-entry was employed to keep the GT90 from melting down. Talk about high tech. So if the GT90 was such an engineering marvel, why did it never hit the streets? It's not that Ford couldn't build it. They did. The GT90 was a fully functional prototype, and it was impressive. Beyond impressive, really. But the dream of this supercar faced some tough realities. The biggest hurdle was cost. Building a car with four turbocharged V12 engines is not cheap. The GT90 was an expensive project, and the return on investment wasn't looking promising. The car was a niche product, and despite its groundbreaking features, it was a financial black hole for Ford. Then there was practicality, or rather, the lack of it. A supercar with four V12 engines isn't exactly practical. Maintenance would be a nightmare, and fuel consumption would be through the roof. The GT90's complexity and high running costs made it a tough sell in a market that was shifting towards more practical and commercially viable vehicles. But here's where the story gets even more intriguing. The GT90 was created as a secret project by a small team of engineers at Ford. They whipped up this automotive marvel in just over six months, a feat that's nothing short of incredible. The project wasn't entirely out of the blue. The GT90 shared many components with the Jaguar XJ220, another high-performance car, because Ford owned Jaguar at the time. They even used a Lincoln Town car as a test mule to refine the V12 engine before dropping it into the GT90. Now, you might be wondering why such an amazing car never hit the production line. The GT90 was originally intended to be the successor to the legendary Ford GT40 and the GT70. In fact, it was supposed to bridge the gap between these iconic models and the Ford GT. But here's the twist. After the plan for the GT90's production was scrapped, the timeline got shuffled. The Ford GT ended up being the new successor to the GT40 and GT70, while the GT90 became a fascinating footnote in automotive history. It's October 1995. The Detroit Auto Show is alive with excitement, and Ford has just unveiled the GT90, a car that promised to redefine speed and power. And guess what? It made a splash on Top Gear in Series 34, Episode 6, where Jeremy Clarkson took it for a spin. Now, Clarkson, known for his high standards and sharp tongue, was genuinely excited to test the GT90. After all, he had struggled to fit into the iconic Ford GT40 just two episodes earlier. But did the GT90 live up to the hype? Initially, Jeremy Clarkson was thrilled. The GT90 boasted a 48-valve V12 engine that cranked out a jaw-dropping 720 horsepower and 660 lb-ft of torque. This beast could accelerate from 0 to 60 mph in just 3.1 seconds and reach a top speed of 253 mrups. On paper, it was everything a car enthusiast could dream of. Clarkson's excitement was palpable as he took the GT90 for a test drive, but the honeymoon didn't last long. The GT90's performance, despite its impressive specs, didn't match up in the real world. While it boasted cutting-edge technology and was a marvel of engineering, the car was plagued with issues. The turbocharged V12 engines, while powerful, created a maintenance nightmare and were ridiculously expensive to manage. The car's complexity and high running costs made it a tough sell. 
Moreover, the GT90's handling and driving experience didn't live up to the hype. While it had the raw power and speed on paper, it struggled with real-world handling dynamics. The excitement of driving such a futuristic machine couldn't overshadow its practical shortcomings. Despite its ultimate failure to make it into production, the GT90 remains a fascinating chapter in automotive history. It's a testament to Ford's ambition and willingness to push boundaries, even if the end result didn't quite live up to the vision. The GT90 is a reminder that sometimes even the most spectacular dreams can encounter harsh realities. Today, you can still catch a glimpse of this ambitious project at the Hajek Motorsports Museum in Ames, Oklahoma. It stands as a testament to Ford's daring innovation and a reminder of what might have been. Thanks for watching. Please like the video press, the subscribe button, and also drop your thoughts in the comments section.